Welcome to the cooking stage. Woo. Yeah, you can make some noise for that. We're talking food here, people. We're talking food. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And here's what's the really cool thing. We have Dale and Carrie Spoonmore um, from Seed to Spoon, right? Yep. And I had a chance on the plane, actually, to look at your website and read your story. And it is so inspiring. You guys definitely got to check it out from Seed to Spoon dot net. Uh, Did I get that? Seedtospoon.net, yeah, because this is really, really cool. Now, if you visit him over at his exhibit over there, some of you may or may know his story, but you guys got started in your backyard, correct? Yeah, we started growing food in 2015. We had never grown anything, um, but I, I'm, I'm autistic. I got obsessed, and we ended up uh, converting our entire backyard into gardens, and, um, and that's what led to us doing all this. So. And you have an app as well. Yeah, we have a, a free mobile app. I've got information for it here if you don't already know about it. It'll walk you through how to grow over 100 different foods. It'll give you planting dates that are customized based on where you live. And it'll give you all the information you need about how to grow uh, some of the stuff we're going to talk about cooking today. So. Cool. Well, I, well, here, I'll take it. Sorry. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. No, no, no. I, I want you to definitely talk more about the app, talk more about yourselves. But more importantly, I want to see you cook. So take it away, Dale. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, Carrie, uh, here is, uh, is the cook between us. She is much better at it. Um, I'm more of the, the cutter and whatnot. So I'm going to have her take over. The cooking part and then we're going to kind of talk about growing some of this stuff as we're this is our first time doing it we're going to wing it if you have questions throw them at us but it's going to be fun i promise so carrie you want to talk about what we're making and all of that so this right here is a meal that we make a lot we make it probably at least once a week it is um, a chicken stir fry so i have an instapot right here um which is a pressure cooker and it took 25 minutes to do the chicken i already did it earlier i cheated but it's in there right now, pressure, depressurizing, and then I'll pull it out here in a minute and let it cool down right here. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and get everything else together. And what yeah. we're also gonna do, what we're also gonna do is we're going to use the chicken. So it's a whole chicken. We're gonna use the bones of the chicken to make broth. And then that's the, the broth that we use to make the rice. So, and then, you know, we make all the vegetables go in with that as well. So. Um, that's one key, key thing we want to mention is we're, we're using the same chicken throughout the whole process. So we feel like we're getting, you know, one, we're getting broth that is homemade that has a lot more nutritional value than stuff you're getting in the store. Uh, we're getting a lot more purpose out of a chicken and we're working towards eating a more sustainable way of eating, which is we're trying to get to the point of eating what we could sustain ourselves or keep ourselves in our backyard. So when you're eating a chicken, it's very visual of, okay, that's one chicken. I probably shouldn't eat one chicken every day. That's not a sustainable way to live. And it helped us start to be more creative in how we use chicken and stuff like that. So that's one of the reasons why we're showing this and going through it. And it's a way for us to incorporate all the vegetables from our garden, pretty much any vegetable you can substitute into this. So without further ado, let's get started and take over on your side and I'll, I'll start cutting and we'll kind of talk about what we're doing. Yeah, so whenever I first start this, if I'm doing it by myself, I usually just pull everything out. I start the chicken and then I go for the rice. And usually what I do with the rice, I let these uh, stainless steel pans heat up. And then once they are nice and warm, I usually add in some oil and then I like to fry the rice just a little bit. And then I let them let that cook. And then I turn my attention over here to all the vegetables. And I mean, we use pretty much everything from the garden. We should probably talk a little bit more about the chicken and how we got it started in the end spot and what we did there. Um, I guess let's go ahead and pull that out and, yeah. and show that side of it. So we, we cooked the chicken in our booth like an hour ago back there looking in and uh, we sauteed it for, we've got a camera here. I guess if we move it, hold this for a second, please. Yeah. We'll move it over here. Can you, is that camera working? Can y'all see what that's showing? No? No. Okay, hold on. Let's try turning the TV on. <laughs> I'm tech support. She's. So I used this grapeseed oil and I, hmm. I sauteed both sides. And then I added just a little bit of chicken broth to the bottom before I, I cooked it. And I just did 25 minutes, 25 minutes there. And then I let it depressurize. And then now I'm going to pull it out and I'll set it right here. And then we'll let it kind of cool down before we have to pull it off and use it for the stir fry. And you can also do things like put herbs in here when you cook it and other things. We didn't do any of that this time. This was in a hurry. We're getting the flavor through other ways. And we've got some chives that are going to be coming in from our booth here in a second. We'll use those, you know, to flavor at the end too. Okay, so I'll move this back out of the way now. Okay. What do you want me to do to help you? What do you want me to do next? Just keep cutting? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. 
So one thing um, that we don't have here that we really love to use is, a, uh, is cabbage leaves. And we actually found that out accidentally. We, uh, it was what, two years ago now? We had a huge hailstorm, and it was right before um, all of our um, vegetables and everything had done anything. So we didn't have any heads or anything like that. And we're like, what can we do with all these leaves and damaged plants? So we started Googling around, and we're like, oh, we can eat like the cabbage leaves themselves. We can eat the broccoli leaves themselves. So we started adding them into the stir fry, and it tastes amazing. If you haven't tried that before, definitely do it. It tastes great. And there's actually... Varieties too of, of cabbage and broccoli that grow better in that way. So what I mean is uh, instead of producing one large broccoli head, they produce a bunch of side shoots of broccoli and they produce those continuously. So once we realized that, uh, we started adjusting the types of plants we grew. So instead of trying to grow a big head of broccoli, we started growing more of those. As far as cabbage was concerned, instead of trying to grow big heads of cabbage and we were fighting off cabbage moss and worms and bugs all season, we started growing the, the Asian varieties, more of the sprouting cabbages. <laughs> Do you need help? Very well cooked. Um, so it just really is about adjusting the, the, you know, the philosophy of, of how we view the things we grow. And instead of viewing them the way that um, you view them in the grocery store, which is often the way that they can be grown, mass produced in the best way, not necessarily the best way for you to eat or the easiest way to grow in your backyard. So those are the, some, some of the ways we've adjusted how we view some of the things we grow. Um, yeah. Yes, you can see this is very steaming hot, so I'm not gonna touch it yet. But whenever I do pull apart, I'm just gonna pull off the skin and the bones, and I'm gonna set aside the meat to use in the stir fry, and then the bones I'm gonna put back into the Instapot, like we talked about, and then I fill it up to the max line with water, and then you add in just a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and you set it to the soup mode for either, I mean, you can we'll do, it for, do it for, yeah, we'll two or three hours, and, and then yeah. you have broth, it's great. The point is, you end up with this. Yeah. Which is the broth that you get that's homemade. And we get three one gallon. Yeah, the, the really big ones. Yeah, usually three, three one three gallon containers for every batch we do um, of this. So generally, we've we have we got plenty to go off of. Mm -hmm. And that's what we use to make the rice. Now, the rice we get, there's a lot of different types of rice that we use. This is the. Basmati. Yeah, yeah. So. Basmati? B A S M A T I. We, uh, we buy it yeah. in big bags in bulk. From Sam's Club or Home Depot, yeah. or I mean, not Home Depot, uh, Winco. Yeah, Sam's Club yeah. is where we usually. <laughs> yeah, oh, it'd be great if we had a Costco next week. It's place. coming, yeah, there's one coming north side. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this pan's hot, so I'm just going to add some oil just to cover the bottom. There really isn't an art, I just do cover the bottom of it. And then I already pre measured this, and this is just two cups, so I'm just going to put this in the bottom here. Normally what we do is we let the, the oil heat up a little bit in the pan, and then we put it in, just give a little crispiness, but just to save time, we're not going to do that this time. As far as the oils that we use, uh, grape seed is generally what we try to use the most. Um, so I've read a, oil is another good one. Yeah, basically the oils with the highest smoke points. Um, if, so basically the idea is the, some of the other oils, like olive oil, once it hits 350, I think it starts smoking, and then that's whenever it produces some of the carcinogens, like some of the bad things for you basically is when it hits that smoke point. So some of these other oils have higher smoke points and they're better for cooking in that way. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, Michael Pollan has a lot of books that talk about this. Uh, in Defense of Food is one of them. Uh, he goes into detail about this kind of stuff. But uh, the point is we typically st stick with grapeseed oil or, it, it, yeah, for the most part. If we're, if we're in a pinch, we'll use olive oil. Um, but we really, really try to avoid the, uh, avoid the like, vegetable oils and the canola oils and those, those type of things. So while you're doing that, do you mean to start doing the stir fry over here yet? Um, yeah, you can start chopping okay. up. Um, so first, the first things that I add over here to this wok is going to be the garlic and onions. And we add garlic and onions to pretty much everything that we make. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's amazing how different things taste when, when you just add a little bit of oil and then you, uh, I can never use a knife in front of people. And then you, uh, <laughs> you saute some onions and garlic for a little bit. We were supposed to have our 10-year-old uh, our with us. She's the expert pillar in, in all this. So. She is, yep. We always put the kids to work in the kitchen. They love it. Our three-year-old can even peel garlic and... Yeah. yeah. When our eight and ten-year-old uh, were 
little bit younger, they actually had their own little like little cooking show. We've got a, it's on our YouTube channel where they were making like spaghetti and smoothies and all sorts of stuff. It was it was cute. Okay, so now this is ready to add some broth. So I'm going to take the homemade broth and I'm going to do since I have two cups right here, I'm going to do four cups of liquid. So what I like to do for the stir fry to get the flavor into it, I do about three cups of this and then I add in a cup of soy sauce. That was a perfect amount. Look at that. Good job. <laughs> we, um, we try and rotate through the types of things that we have in the stir fry. So we have some things in here that we don't typically have this type of year. These are beans. Typically this type of year we have, we have peas in our stir fry. So we try and include whatever is in season for that time. If you're not sure what is in season or what you can grow at the time, our app actually has a feature where it'll show you what, what you can grow where you live in that moment. So it'll show you all the things if you grow and so you can see what's in season or if you're shopping at the store so you can see kind of what's in season so you know um, what, what you can add in. Okay. So now this, I'm just gonna cover and we're just gonna let it be. How much garlic do you need? Like half a... We use a lot of garlic. Yeah, so I'm one of those people where if a recipe calls for like two, two bowls of garlic, I do a lot more. <laughs> yeah, oh, I usually yeah. put in at least half of... Half of the thing? Yeah. My mess is on display this time. Your mess? All the mess I make every time I'm in the kitchen. That I have to clean up? I know, normally it's a... <laughs> oh cool, we got like a little trash can thing. Yeah. Y'all have any questions? Anything y'all want to know more about as far as growing food or preservation, anything like that? Or while we're doing this video? So one thing too that I usually add in, I did not bring with me though, is is peppers. Um, so anywhere from like bell peppers, jalapenos, anything like that. If we have them fresh from the garden, it's great. But we actually have a whole bunch in our freezer right now. So what we do, like last season, we had a crazy amount of peppers. So all I did, I, I ran them through the Ninja. Um, just, you know, I chop off the top part, ran them through the Ninja, get with them the all seeds. chopped off with the yeah. seeds in them, and then lay them out flat on our freezer sheet and put them in the deep freeze. And then I let them do or freeze up for a day and then I move them over to a bag and then I have just have this bag that I go and pull a spoonful out and pop it in here whenever I need it yeah yes the freezer safe ones yeah no you can and if but we get we get into it frequently like we use it at least once a week whenever we're hooking so we just go in there open it up get a spoonful close it back up What's that? If you add enough, yes. But once you saute them, it, it kills a lot of the heat. So, yes. Um, and a lot, of the, a lot of the nutritional benefits of peppers are in the seeds themselves. It's the chemical that makes them hot. So um, if you can build up your tolerance to them, it's, especially it's, it's a heavy cancer fighter. Um, so uh, there's a lot of people that eat, like one of the, the diets on the, on the cancer diet is eating a whole jalapeno every day, seeds mm -hmm. and all. Um, I don't know how I could do it if it well, wasn't sautéed. There's mild <laughs> versions, so there's mild jalapenos too. There's all sorts of varieties of different heats. Um, and typically the jalapeno ones aren't too bad. Yeah, and they have, hot. like I said, there's mild ones. There's some, especially there's ones that said like folia, like things like that, are, are varieties that work really well for that. Yeah, right, go ahead and add in the garlic and the onions. Yeah, you ready? Yep, yeah, it's very yeah. hot. Um, if you don't have a wok, it's fine. You can use other pans. We found that woks tend to cook the most even and the fastest, for, especially for stuff like this. So we really like having them. We also use cast iron skillets and cast iron kettles a lot for this type of stuff. It smells good. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna, we have I love the smell forks, of so onions all, and garlic. Yeah, we're going to have extras for anyone that wants to try some. Can you all hear me without the mic? Okay. Why don't you go ahead and get the other onion cool. too? Yeah, sorry. 
<laughs> okay, all right. What's that? Okay. So it works out perfect. All right. I'm making more messages. <laughs> See, that's, that's the kicker there, is adding that. Mills that don't have that, it's worth the extra time to go through and do this. And it's not just the, the added taste, you know, there's a lot of nutritional value to this gar to garlic and onions as well. Now, one thing I want to mention is once you cook them too much, you start to lose some of that value. So there's a fine line between it, and they're starting to get perfect right about now. So once they start turning brown like that, sometimes we'll start the onions before the garlic. That way they brown a little more evenly together because what we're left with now is the garlic is a little more brown than the onions but uh, but that's generally the point when we start putting other stuff in so let me go and throw the carrots in because they're going to take a while mm -hmm. now i'm making messes on the floor y'all can't see that <laughs> see you didn't even have to well, tell we don't have our dogs we have three dogs that we we have for the sole purpose really so they can be our cleanup crew follow our four kids around yeah they really do they follow the kids around and just eat everything that they yeah. spill the chihuahua is an expert he's really fat because he's always the first <laughs> one in the scene here i'm gonna i'm dropping more Ooh. oh man <laughs> <laughs> y'all should see the floor over here <laughs> This will be why I do most of the cooking at home. <laughs> I cook when we can't, so it doesn't really matter. You know, I make a mess. These are our chives that we're going to use, by the way, to top off our meal. Um, if you're not familiar with these, these are called smart pots. They're made here in Oklahoma City, and they're fabric wrapped beds. Growing food really easy. So if you want to see more about those, head down to our booth. Um, we've actually got them for sale for the first time uh, down here. So. Um, we're really big believers in these. I started using them two years ago after uh, hearing about them through some friends, uh, professors at OSU, and they, they saw some good results to them, and I started trialing them, and I really was blown away by them, so. <clears throat> Smart pots. The thing that's really handy about them, more, more than anything for me, is in the summer, I can take seven or eight of these and put them inside of a kiddie pool, and then fill that kiddie pool with a couple inches of water, and then that keeps them watered throughout the whole day. And if it's something that you know, like spinach, for example, I can have it out in full sun now, and then in April and May, I can start moving it towards in the shade. It doesn't bolt on me. Um, they're really nice for portability in that way, too. We've got a lot of different sizes at our booth, too. Um, you can see all the different sizes we have. I need to cut more stuff, don't I? <laughs> beans next, probably? Uh, yeah, we'll do beans and then broccoli. And we'll add stuff in in the order in which it... That'll get tender. Yeah, so. Cut the and, and like he said, like usually we, we just go out in the garden and see what's in season, what's out there, what we have, and we pretty much we'll take anything and throw anything into this. We pretty much always have more spinach, kale, and things like that than we can ever eat. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff going into it. Those are some of the things you can grow that have the most amount of health benefits. Uh, specifically uh, for anxiety and depression. They have a lot of magnesium and kale. So we grow a lot of that, and we add it in to a lot of the stuff. And it also gets it to where our kids eat it, because they don't even realize it's in there. You'll see once we put the leaves in there, they'll cook down so small that you won't even see they're in there. Um, the same thing with herbs like oregano and rosemary and some of those other herbs that have a ton of health benefits. It's a way for us to get them into our diet and to our, into our kids' diet um, easily and consistently every single day we're eating something like this and this yeah we add here, them into our eggs too in the morning when we make scrambled eggs mm -hmm. we uh in the chives as well and just cut up some spinach chives it's great and then this Kids meal here will last us for two or three days we'll have a big container that container back there you see behind us will is where this will go into and then this becomes our lunches and you know sometimes our dinners the next day um and sometimes I'll, uh, I'll want to switch up the flavor from, you know, from the way we cooked it to the way it's left over. So what we'll do is we'll have a lot of those peppers that she mentioned on hand. But we also have 
dried peppers. So we have peppers that we harvest out of the garden, we run them through our dehydrator, and then run them through our ninja to chop them up into small little pieces. And then we have those, and it's like a powder really is what it's like. And we have that on hand. So I'll add that into this to make it like a spicy dish and I can add in you know, something fresh to it so it doesn't feel quite so repetitive. Because that is the challenge that we faced when we first started growing food. We were really excited for the first you know, month or two to have all this stuff coming out, but then we were, we were pretty bored with squash at, at that point. And there's only so many ways that you can make it taste good. And that's when she really got obsessed with trying to find all the ways. And we have like 27 blog posts on our website right now of all the different, or for squash right now, of all the different yeah. recipes she's found. And, and a lot like of zucchini it, grilled cheese, like so many fun things. Yeah, a lot of stuff it's like so that. Good. And we started uh, growing a lot of different varieties of herbs. So uh, at our booth, we've got a bunch of stuff from Prairie Wind Nursery. Bill Ferris is the owner, and he's a bit of a collector of herbs like I am. So he's got like 14 types of basil and all these types of rosemary and oregano. And each one of those has its own subtle flavors. So when you have all of those on hand and you start adding them in, then everything it tastes different from day to day. So if you take this and throw basil in it, it's gonna taste radically different than if you do with oregano and it keeps it fresh. So between that and adding in the different vegetables, we're able to live off of this kind of stuff, this and things like it, you know, this or a side uh, or like some sort of meat with the size of vegetables um, from April to October pretty much. Now, if we had a greenhouse or if I was a little more diligent in the winter, we could probably pull off doing that longer. But by then I'm ready to take a break. So, <laughs> and I go eat all the hamburgers in the world for three months and gain all the weight back I lost. And then it's right back at it again the next year. So, <laughs> and that's where I am right now. <laughs> hey, but we're being healthy right here. I know, I know, yeah. We had our last hurrah last weekend. We went on spring break and had like a bunch of horrible food and uh, did all that, went camping and all that kind of stuff, so. Okay, I'm ready for beans when you are. Okay, I'm almost done. So I have this front pan right here heating up. I'm gonna do um, some eggs in there. I'm just gonna scramble some eggs and, and pop it in there too to add, add some flavor and protein and... The beans you don't wanna do too early on because they'll get kind of gnarly. I don't know a better word. Gnarly is a good word for it. How many beans do you want? Is that a good amount? That's probably good. You decorate we'll about like you the... do a Christmas tree. This yeah, is, there's, this is about the size there's of no way art. To say we it, just kind of look at it and oh yeah, that yeah. looks like a good amount. It looks and pretty even and add some yeah. more, less. The biggest thing that we try and like you got to stick to with avoiding. Uh, so, I mean, what one challenge we had in the beginning was. We, we had all this food and we didn't know how it went together and what portions and whatnot. And I think the basic way for us to explain where we've come to on this is you're fine doing proportions of whatever vegetables you want. Just be careful with some of the herbs, like sage and oregano can be, and rosemary can be very overpowering in, in recipes. So start small with those. You can go wild with thyme. It's very it's forgiving. It's, you can use like salt basically. So start with that one and then work in some of the other herbs. But you know, in the beginning, I would ruin a meal by adding in a huge thing of rosemary. It made her hate rosemary for like a year. Yes. She just now came it around to rosemary while. like last year. <laughs> I ruined it for her almost. <laughs> well, I love it now. What's that? Oh, they love stir fry. This Once is one they, of their favorite meals. They have to grow it though. My, they didn't really like broccoli. In fact, they would never eat broccoli until we grew it. And then we're able to get them to try broccoli with some cheese on it. And now they're at the point where they'll eat it in the stir fry. So that's the, the key for us is to have them grow it. And once they experience that, then they're fine with eating it. You chop those up smaller, please. Yep. Thank you. How much smaller? See, like, this is great. I'm the boss over here. I can tell them what to do. Always the boss. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good size? Yeah. That's okay. perfect. What about that one? Is that one all right? Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, we've got one kid that actually helps keep us on track with this because she likes this stuff more than we do. So she's she's kind of a, like a born vegetarian in a way. She doesn't really like, like meat that much. She ordered a salad the other day at lunch. I was like, <laughs> we were at okay. the best Mediterranean restaurant in the city, in my opinion. 
and uh, short of it. But it was a good salad, though. It, wasn't, it, was a, it was good. Yeah, it was a Greek salad. It wasn't like a... And then our two youngest kids um, were born pretty much when we started doing this. So they've been around it their whole lives. So their favorite things are peas and... I mean, our two-year-old is the best little onion planter you'll ever... She's three now, right? She's three, yeah. Best little onion planter you'll ever see. Yeah, she just goes out there, too, and, and picks up some some spinach and just starts munching garden. on it. Yeah. Yeah. She loves that. You need me to do anything else? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, you want to go ahead and chop up some of that uh, spinach right there? Just to make, get it in smaller pieces? Yeah. Clean up. Nobody ever said that making stir fry was a clean, clean thing. <laughs> um, some other things you can add into this too, uh, walnuts. If you run them through like a Ninja processor, uh, it adds a, a Thai flair to it. So that's a really good thing to add, especially if you have some sesame oil that goes really well with it. We did uh, actually some pineapple last time oh, yeah. I made this too. It's good. so good. Yeah. yeah, cut up some pineapple in small pieces and oh, so good. And then when the kids are away, then we will saute peppers in, in the beginning with it generally because we can handle it a little spicier. That's the one thing they will avoid if there's anything spicy in there. That's their first question Everything every time we feed them. Is it spicy? <laughs> so. They've been burned too many times by you. trying to eat off daddy's plate. <laughs> well, I think they pretty much He likes everything right super spicy, so. When you have four kids, it becomes a strategy to make sure you get food. <laughs> Just make sure your food's all spicy. And then no one's stealing it off the plate. Except me. Yeah, well, I'm... Hey, the three-year-old, though, she's coming around on it. She is, yeah. She said she likes spicy things now. Queso and salsa is what brought her into it. It's the gateway. Is that good on spinach or you want more? You know me with spinach. I always say the more the merrier. Because the spinach always like shrinks up whenever you cook it too. So I always put what I think is too much, but it always shrinks down. So it's perfect amount. Yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much good. Yeah. You want to start working on that chicken over there? Yep. Um, here, this was used for the soy sauce. Okay. We have a fork or anything like that? We have one of these. No. And we don't need this anymore for vegetables. So now this, I mean, you can pretty much just kind of let it sit and simmer and... So a lot of the times I'll just break up that whole chicken with my hands and just kind of break off pieces too. It gets you dirty, but you get all of the meat off of the bones. It's great. What's that? Oh, it was just, just enough to cover the bottom of it. It may have looked like more, I'm not sure. <laughs> I thought they were talking to us. I was like, oh, uh oh. I feel like this was one of those cooking shows we watched sometimes. <laughs> you know what the kids love? Oh, so they're like, one yes. more minute, and then it's. Yes. Like, yeah, the kids love watching those. They watch them all the time. They're making some ridiculous tank to look at the school bus or something. <laughs> so Are you making a mess over there still? I got it With chicken now? Even. No, that's impressive. That's impressive. Yeah. 
See, there's never a dull moment when we cook together, so. This is a lot of our date nights. Except I've got the kids to help with the stuff I don't like to do. I'm not gonna be perfect on this. We're gonna leave some for you. It's fine. That's the beauty of it. You can just throw it in with the broth and it cooks right in too, so. And then one thing, more, uh, so the broth, when we're done with that, which is generally like, we'll, we'll let that cook a couple cycles sometimes. Like. Yeah, I'm guilty of forgetting about it or doing it overnight and then but having the to cook, run it better, again. So there's no harm to doing that. So we'll run it through two or three cycles in this pot. And then at that point, the bones and everything, you just touch them and they completely crumble. So at that point, the risk to your dogs is gone. And now it's a really good thing to feed your dogs because it has bone material and that kind of stuff that dogs don't really get in their diet as much as they need to. So then we'll take that kind of stuff and then put it mixed with the dog food. They, have to really, they love, anytime we're cooking this, they, they start freaking out because they know what's coming next once it's done. So that's what we do with it when we're done. So we feel like we're getting, for that like 488 we spend on a whole chicken, basically is what it is. We get a ton of value out of it. We get all this chicken off of it, we get the broth, we get the dog food, and it just, yeah. It was a mindset change because before, before we started doing this, uh, we would go to Sam's Club and I would buy the chicken breasts in the really big packs, the huge packs. And I knew, I knew those chicken breasts were way larger than they should have been normally. So I, was, I was just doing it. And, and then once I, re I started reading more about what that means ultimately for me and my family, you know, eating that kind of stuff, that, you know, that's what got us into thinking about, well, how can we get a whole chicken instead? Because that's less processed. And I can look at it, it's a normal looking bird. I mean, this looks about like chicken. Looks about right. I want to see one of the chickens that comes off those, those other ones. That looks like, where is that coming from? You know? So, um, and a lot of times they're adding in other meat and stuff, and you have no idea what's coming from that. This, I know it was a chicken. Sometimes there's feathers left on it. So, um, so we just felt more secure in our eating purchases, I guess is the best way to describe. So that's what led to like figuring out how to cook it the most efficient way possible. And, and now we're really happy with this workflow because at the end of it, every single piece of this chicken is being eaten by something in our household, and it's, we're not being wasteful at all. So. Are these all small pieces already, or? They're just chicken pieces. They're just. I I'll pick them up, up with my there. hands. You may cut them up over there. Um. Yeah, if you dump them out sure. over there, I'll cut them up small for you. Okay. I feel like, I'm, well, I'm, I make a lot of rice because all of our yeah. kids just love rice. Um, oh gosh, anytime I feel like I'm, I do anything in the Instapot, it always, it always calls for, for that. I can't cook without a sink. I'm not <laughs> playing for this. All right, I'm being bad. I'm just going to wipe them on my hand, on my pants. In front of <laughs> well, at least people. it's not raw. So it's all cooked. Yeah, You're yeah. all good. Yeah. You're good. Here you go. <laughs> I just know it's not appropriate, so I've got to address it. <laughs> can't just do it. Obviously, you can substitute whatever meat or do no meat in this if you just want to keep it vegetarian. Um, sometimes we'll add in, because I it's hard for me to eat things that don't have the texture of meat in a way. So we'll find substitutions. Um, what are like sweet potatoes or some things, like, if you cook them the right way, kind of have that texture. Turnips the other day. Oh, this is a little mm -hmm. tip. Turnips, if you cook them the right way, it tastes just like french fries. And if you cut yeah. them the right way, they look just like french fries. So you can yeah. really trick yourself. I know. I tricked the kids, too. They were great. like, oh, we have french fries? And then our two- and three-year-old were like, yes! <laughs> Makes sense. I mean, they're not that different. They're both root crops. You ready for the chicken? Yeah, hop them in. Okay. We probably don't want to put all the chicken in there, right? It's too much. I usually... Like half of it? Like yeah. I don't know what we're going to do with the rest of it, though. So don't we, we might as well thing? just pop it all in there. Make it very chicken. Okay. Or give it to this. <laughs> He'll take it. Let's try that. Yeah. We forgot salt and stuff, didn't we? 
Oh, I don't ever put salt. Okay. The soy sauce yeah. more than oh, covers yeah. everything. Yeah, it's got a lot of yeah. salt in it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Are there any other seasonings? So we've got chives here. So typically we'll go through. Did you talk about your red pepper? I did, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because I know you do that a lot on this. So I'd use more, but that's a small chive plant. Um, we have these pretty cool scissors that have five like blades on them. So we'll use that and just kind of go through and chop it all through at the end. Um, what else do we do? Pretty much it, right? Yeah. That's it. That's, that's what we do. Do we want to show the broth? I mean, that's so. At this point, we have the chicken that we put back in here. I'm not sure how far the camera comes over. Y'all can... see that? Okay. So we've got this, and we would go through and fill it with water until like this line right here, and then we'll put in uh, two tablespoons of vinegar. Is that right? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I usually do like two or three. Yeah, just kind of, of apple cider vinegar. Apple right cider here. vinegar. What does that do? Do you remember? I think it helps. One thing is break down the bones and stuff. You um, know what? I'm not sure. I think no, it no, just it helps, helps for preservation and stuff like that. It helps extract things out of the bones. Is that right? Yeah, extract the minerals out of the bones. Yeah. yeah. And we've got plates and forks for anyone that wants to wants to try it. That's the best part of the whole thing. <laughs> and that's it. It is so good. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Our kids love this. This is one of their favorite meals. They always get really excited. And it's really good reheated and easy. Yeah. And it's fun to go out in the garden too and start collecting everything from out there. Go pick some peas, go pick some beans or something, you know. And... Okay, does you anybody want to try it? Yes. All right. Okay, let's do it. It's gonna be very hot. <laughs> So please don't burn yourself. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you like your card about the app, feel free to come take one. <laughs> yes. One for the boat. Do you want more yeah. than that, or yeah, is... thank you? Okay, well, you're welcome. I need two. Okay. He's guarding the fort over there. <laughs> I could help you. Here, I could be no, doing something. We're good. We're there you go. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Says. Yeah. All right. <laughs> there we go. Can you stop by the booth here in a bit? I've got some I can give away. If you're interested, come by, I'll give you one. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. And can I get two glasses of white wine? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Wouldn't that be great? Just, just a bit. Is there a wine village right here somewhere? Right there. Right there. <laughs> Oh, there you can join go. us there. There next. you go. Right, right there. <laughs> Do you want more? Or is that good? We're going to share. Okay. Thank you. Go. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. There you go. The, which one? For the broth or? The chicken was just 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. We have a video on our, on our website that shows how we do it and shows the whole process. I think we have all of this on our website as recipes yeah. and all that. Oh, I want to mention that too. On our website, we have all these recipes yeah. on there too. And in our app, um, on each vegetable page, we have a link to all the recipes that apply to that vegetable. <laughs> so this one should be on all of them, I think, because this applies to every vegetable. Everybody get some? Is that your phone? Okay. No, my phone's 
So I, I usually put like some garlic and salt, um, but that's pretty much it whenever I'm doing something like this, because I mean, there's really no reason, because all of this will add all the flavor I need. If we're so. eating chicken by itself, then we do a lot more. We'll see yeah. that, we'll put herbs on it, we'll let it sit for a bit. It's really rare that we eat chicken by itself like that. It usually goes into other meals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, typically if we're eating. Oh, the pressure cooker, all the time. We actually have two because we use it so often. I was like, I need another one just to keep up. So yeah, pretty much every single day I have something going on. For, I mean, the main things for this thing, the thing that blew my mind, dried beans, you can make in 30 minutes from completely dry to cooked. So before we were having to take dried beans, soak them overnight, and then wait the next day and then cook them. And we just never did it. But once we did this, we were able to buy beans in bulk in these huge bags, and we never run out. We've always got more than we could ever use. We can grow more, and they're really easy to use. And it's, uh, and you know, the, the beans you, you get out of the can, they've lost a lot of the nutrition value by then, and it's all the preservatives and all the other stuff. So it's a really easy way to get preservatives out of your diet, to get good, healthy fibers in, and to be sustainable, because it's really easy to have a huge pile of beans. Good, good, thank you. Anybody want any more? <laughs> we have plenty up here, so. <laughs> Just throw some on there. Okay. There you there go. You go. <laughs> no. We only have this cooking today, but we have uh, gardening classes there you go. all weekend at our booth. And then Good, thank you. At the workshop page. I have to say, that is the best fried rice I've ever eaten. Ooh, oh, I'm so glad to hear I'm it. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, we'll have this video up on our website. Okay. So we, we video everything we do and it all goes up on our website. So we'll have it up there. Oh, great. And we have a class on Sunday. We're not going to be on the cooking stage. We'll be at our booth doing this class. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We'll be talking through instead of actually showing You smelling yellow over there. It's just not even dry. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> We do. So um, our rosemary survives through the winter typically, so I just keep pulling on that all winter. Uh, basil is gone by October, so that uh, basil is really hard to preserve. The way that we preserve it is in ice cubes uh, of, of oil. So we fill up silicone ice cube trays with vegetable oil, I mean, not vegetable, olive oil, and then fill, first we fill those cubes with shredded basil, and then fill that with olive oil to put that in the freezer, and then you pull that out and you have these frozen oil cube trays. So you can just throw them on the pan, let that, you know, turn the heat up and then that will thaw. And then you've got your basil and oil there together already. So that's what we do with basil. Um, with oregano and rosemary and sage, we'll, we will dry and preserve some of those. But for the most part, we just try and keep fresh stuff on hand. Because um, we've got like sage and rosemary, that stuff lasts throughout the, throughout the winter too. Here in Oklahoma City, yeah. Oh, really? It, so rosemary it is in the ground. depends yeah. on where it is. Um, it's very temperamental, and, and two, it depends on the variety. So Bill Ferris from Prairie Wind has done trials with OSU to see what variety of rosemary does the best. Uh, ARP is the one that typically does best, so I've got a lot of that in my yard that I've got from him. It's also in places that are sheltered, so whenever we get those really cold temperatures, it doesn't get as cold there. Um, and I also, like, will cover them in the winter if we're going to have a really bad cold snap. So half my rosemary died, but half of them survived. So uh, ARP? ARP. Yeah. Yeah, and we've got, you know, we had like 10 rosemary bush plants probably last year. We've got five now that survived throughout yeah. the winter. Um, and then we've also got indoor grow areas and stuff that we've got like, you know, little herbs growing here and there, like chives or whatnot throughout the winter. <laughs> yeah, chives do yes. wonderful. Look. That's one of the easiest things to Our grow. Our chives are just exploding outside right now. They're great. Yes, they That's taste awesome. so good, especially the flowers of chives too. You ever had a chive They're flower? so good. Oh, we got to go. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you guys so much for coming out.